What's up, YouTube? I'm William, a former software engineer, and out of nowhere, I've decided that I'm going to attempt to start a programming series. I know. I've been up since around 3 a.m. I'm jet lagged. I just got back from Asia, and I'm just like, you know what? I'm sitting here doing nothing. Maybe I can do something. And it's now 7.52 randomly. I haven't planned this, so if this seems a little bit weird, eh, just do it with it. Hopefully over time, it'll get better. But first, what am I going to do? The goal is to teach you all TypeScript. But I do understand that TypeScript is a little bit more advanced, especially for people who have no idea what programming is. And that's the audience that I'm intending this uh, series to be for. It's for people who don't even know what a programming language is. Now, I know that I'm going to kind of jump around and I'm going to kind of lean on you to do a little bit of Googling uh, to learn some of these things. Because at the end of the day, I can't truly teach you how to program. I can show you the syntax. I can teach you about logic. Uh, I can show you different algorithms, but at the end of the day, you're going to have to do a little bit of self-study. So we'll, we'll get it started off just like that. All right, JavaScript. JavaScript is one of the world's most popular languages. In fact, it may be the world's most popular language. If you've ever interacted with a website, you've interacted with JavaScript. Uh, if you've e ever gone to a website, chances are that that website, even not, not even on the client side, the client is what you interact with, your, your browser, but it's, it's likely that the server is also running JavaScript as well. Uh, it's likely that whoever built the, the tools or the, the project or the service or the app that you're using, chances are that JavaScript played some role in getting that delivered to you. So I think JavaScript is one of the better languages to start out with. And because it's, because it's very, very closely related to TypeScript, it's going to work out for me because that's actually what I would prefer to show you all. In any case, uh, in order to follow through with this, at least for now, you only need a browser. The browser that I'm going to use is called Firefox. You can use Chrome, you can use Brave, you can use Safari. If Internet Explorer still exists, I'm sure you could use that. But what you want to do is you want to come in and press F12 in your browser, which should bring up developer tools. Now, if F12 doesn't work for you, I want to say that you go, you can go into your menu somewhere and there will be something in here where you can open up your dev tools. I don't know how to find it in the menu. So here's another way to find it. Right click on whatever page you're on. Uh, in this case, this is just whatever my home page is. Just right click and click inspect. And you'll notice that it's gonna, well, let me close this first. You'll notice if I do inspect, it's gonna open up the same window, right? Except now, whenever I hover over anything, it's gonna try to, it's gonna like show, um, you know, some some like bars or whatever to show that I'm selecting that. Anyway, let's, let, let me get out of that. Okay, if you're in Firefox, uh, you know, this is gonna be a lot easier for you because you're gonna see the same uh, user interface that I'm looking at. What you wanna do is click on console, and here is where you can, Play with JavaScript. Let's also do this in Brave, which is basically Chrome. And if you're using Chrome, this should work out for you as well. So you'll see all I'm doing is I'm right clicking and then doing inspect and I get something very similar. And then there's something, a tab here called console. Just click that, we get the same thing. Uh, let's see, uh, Safari, we can do this on Safari as well. If you're on Safari, it is a little bit different. I apologize, it's not my fault. Uh, but I think what you need to do is when you open up Safari, if you press command comma, that's going to open up your preferences. And I think you can go to advanced or not. Hmm. I actually have no idea how you do this in Safari. <coughs> All right. Let's pretend that let's just pretend that I didn't even try to show you this in Safari. Don't use Safari for this. Use Chrome, use Firefox. Yeah, use one of those two. I'm going to use Firefox. So today I want to get off. I want to start off with just showing, I guess, the most basic thing in a language, and that's variables. Uh, variables are incredibly important in any programming language because at the end of the day, programming is about working with data and we need some way to store and reference data. And the way we do that in JavaScript and in every other language is with variables. Now, there is some syntax that we're going to have to go over. Uh, there are only a few things. It's not that hard. The first one is a keyword, var, B-A-R. 
This is the keyword that allows us to define a variable. So the way we do it is we type in var, V-A-R, and then we can type in a name. So in this case, I'm going to say my variable. And you'll notice that the way that I typed out my variable is with a lowercase, the first letter is lowercase, and then the second word, first letter is uppercase. Uh, we call this camel case. So if I were to say my uh, long variable, you'll see here that we're doing kind of the same thing where uh, each word I begin with a capital letter. This is called camel case. Uh, this is a standard or a convention that we use in JavaScript. You don't have to follow this, but it would be helpful if you know you kind of just mirror whatever I'm doing here because it'll make your life a little bit easier. So let's go ahead and say my variable, my variable. All right. Now you'll notice that after this, I put in a space. The space is actually optional, but uh, I'm going to encourage you to do exactly as I do. Uh, just put a space. Um, so we're going to do space equals. Now this sign we know as equals uh, because in, in math we we see that you know we we call it equal. However, in a programming language, uh, this is not actually a equal sign or it's not equal. It's not an equality operator. It's actually an assignment operator. So it allows us to assign whatever's on the right side to that name that's on the left side. So uh, my variable, I'm going to set equal to five, right? So when I press enter, what I'm going to do, or not what I'm going to do, what JavaScript runtime is going to do is initiate this variable and put the value of five inside of it. So we'll just do that. All right, we get back undefined. You can ignore that. Uh, this is because we're in something called a REPL, a re-eval print loop. This right here is just showing that, hey, whenever we ran the statement, it didn't return anything. You can ignore that for now, safely. Let's see if this actually worked. My variable. Look at that, we get five. All right. So that's one way that we can create a variable. Uh, I'm going to show another way that we can create a variable. Uh, and I'm not going to get into the details of when you should use which at the moment. I just want to introduce it so that when we eventually get there, it's not foreign to you. So the second way to create a variable is with another keyword called let, L-E-T. Same concept here. We're going to type in the keyword followed by a space followed by a name. So we'll say my other variable. Again, I'm using camel case. All right, we're going to set this equal to something else. Let's set this equal to a string. I'm not going to get into what a string is yet, but I want to introduce it. My name is William, so I'm going to say uh, William. Now I've defined my other variable, and if I were to type that in, we get back William. Okay. So far, you've seen two ways to define a variable. You've also seen how to assign a value to a variable. And you've also seen that we can put different types of data into a variable. There is another type of variable that we can create. And it's actually kind of weird because I'm going to call it a constant. Uh, and you can think of it as a read only variable in that we define it at runtime, but we can't change it. I don't want to get into the difference between a true constant and a constant variable in, in JavaScript. So for all intents and purposes, let's just call them read only variables. The way that we create that is we use another keyword const C O N S T followed by space. This time I'm going to call this my constant variable, or we're not going to call it that. We're going to say my read only variable. Cool. Let's set it equal to something. Let's set this equal to false. This is a Boolean. There are only two possible values of a Boolean, true or false. We'll get into that later. Let's go ahead and define that. And we'll see if I type in my uh, read only variable, we get back false. So you've seen three different ways of creating a variable. We use var, we use let, and we use const. To assign a variable, we use the assignment operator, which is also known as equals in math. And so far, you've seen that we can put different types of data inside of a variable. 
Now let's get into why these things are called variables. Let's start off with the first thing that I created. Let, let me create, make this a little bit bigger. All right, so my first variable, my variable, is equal to five. Well, it's called a variable because we can change the value that's in it. So now I'm going to assign something else to it. I'm going to put iPhone 14. Completely different data type, completely different value, and it's going to allow me to do this. All right, so now we get my variable is iPhone 14. So if I type in my variable, we get iPhone 14. Now, do note that just a few minutes ago, it was holding the value five. So the variable, the very, uh, that, that's what this means. You can change the values. They can change. That's it. We could do the same thing with my other variable. So let's do that. My other variable. Right now it has William. Let's set that equal to my last name. So we'll call that Shepard. All right. My other variable. We get back Shepard. Okay. Finally, let's get to this last variable, the read-only variable. You'll notice when I try to change this, my read-only variable, and I set it equal to, let's set it equal to five. Look at that. We get an error. We can't change it. That's why it's called a read-only variable, a.k.a. a constant. It's because you can change it. That's it. Hopefully, this short video uh, is enough to kind of get you a little bit interested in programming. Uh, you know, you've basically learned what some people learn in their first course and a college class on learning how to program. What's a variable? In my next video, I'm likely going to go over types and I will likely also go over the different operators. Right now, you've only seen uh, one operator, the uh, assignment operator, and you have seen a few types. We have this type, a number. We have this type. We call these strings. Anything in double quotes or single quotes is a string. And you've also been introduced to this type, a Boolean, which only has two possible values, true and false. We'll go over the other ones in a little bit more detail in another video. But for now, I want to go ahead and get this uploaded because this is a goal for me. I, I literally just decided like literally an hour ago that I'm going to do this video and I'm going to upload it today. So please, you know, hopefully, hopefully this has been helpful. Uh, if you have any questions, please just leave the comments. I will respond to every single comment and uh, do expect these to get a little bit better over time each and every video uh, up until the point to where like they become almost professional level. But for now, peace.